Hello, my name's Charles McInnes. I'm a composer, trombonist and researcher based in Melbourne, Australia. In this video, I'm going to explain a little bit about the processes behind the composition and performance of Gazebos Played. And this is a work that I wrote in 2018. And it was performed that year by my group, Ensemble Density, at the Melbourne Recital Centre. Gazebo's Played was the final work of an hour-long concert and the theme of the concert was loosely looking at and dedicated to some of the art happenings and musical performances that took place in Melbourne in the 1960s and early 1970s uh, in the visual art and music scene. Gazebo's Played itself is a continuation of some of the project work that psychologist and composer Jeff Pressing undertook in the 70s and 80s in Australia. He was born in America but did most of his work in Australia. Now quite by accident I found out about an ensemble he ran at La Trobe University in the early 70s called Splayed Gazebo. And this happened by accident because I was speaking to a Melbourne saxophonist John Barrett who was in that group as a student. So John said that what they did, which was quite a new thing for them at the time, what they did was each member of the ensemble received a short rhythmic motif and the idea was that they developed that motif on their own and this added up to a improvised ensemble texture. Now, Pressing's work later from the 80s about improvisation and so forth is quite well known, yet this early stuff from the 70s is not so well researched or documented. Now one of the basis of his improvisation theory is this idea of the referent and uh, I'll just read a short quote about what he means by a referent in improvisation. This is, according to him, quote, an underlying formal scheme or guiding image specific to a given place used by the improviser to facilitate the generation and editing of improvised behaviour on an intermediate time scale. So Pressing's idea was adapted in the following ways. At the beginning of the concert, as the listeners came in, and there were about, I think, 70 of them altogether, um, we handed out cards of different colours along with the program. So not everybody got one, but we did it as randomly as possible. And these cards were in three categories. There were um, white ones, just with the various notes, etc. There were orange ones with um, suggestions as to what to do with the notes.
And finally, there were brown cards, which were indications of how to interact in the group and uh, who to interact with. So these relatively simple sounding activities and instructions were the result of a larger research project of mine, in fact my PhD, entitled Improvising Space. And what emerged from that was a framework for improvisation in the contemporary art music ensemble. That means guidelines for assisting players in improvising. And as you might have noticed with those different coloured cards, the orange ones and the brown ones, I divided the instructions into two categories. So the first were what I called technical instructions, what to do with sounds, and the second category was performance actions, as I explained before, who to interact with and how. And this piece Gazebo's played is an example of this process in action. So before we started playing, I asked who in the audience had a card. And I invited the different people to decide who they should give their cards to in the ensemble. And the audience were already quite comfortable with this type of interaction because in the first piece, we, we had them um, making all sorts of sounds as part of the noise choir. So they were, you know, shuffling feet on the floor and uh, adding some sound effects with mobile phones and doing some different vocalizations and stuff and these were different textures so they were already pretty relaxed and pretty comfortable um, and I have to say they really enjoyed picking their favorite players and and uh, walking over and giving the cards to them right so each player had uh, at least one white card one note one or two notes and one each of the others, so one technical instruction and one performance action. And before we started the piece proper, I got each musician just to play their note and demonstrate a sort of typical modification based on the card, just with the idea so that once the piece got a little bit thicker and everyone was playing, that the listeners could still identify perhaps their particular instructions amid the sound. As you can see in the clip, I gently direct the group from time to time. And this was mainly just to encourage them to do the interactive things. Uh, at one point, I even hold up a, a mock brown card just to, just to get, that, get that part of the interaction going. Towards the end, I left the performance area and just stood at the back and let the ensemble just figure out their own ending, which they're very good at doing. And a final thing I want to say is just a word about a gazebo. Remember, it's neither inside nor outside. There's no clear entrance, there's no clear exit. And at the end of the day, you pack it up and put it away. It's a temporary structure.